Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand. Well, you know, the last time I was here, there was, you know, a little bit of a discrepancy of who made the best lemon meringue pie, so I thought maybe I would expand and try some other pies. So I thought maybe I'd try my hand at <laughs> uh, uh, caramel apple streusel pie with pecans on it. What do you think? I like it. <laughs> Does anybody else make any pies like this in this room? Well, maybe we'll just have to see who's the best. Hmm. I need someone to taste it. <laughs> Tom Jackson, would you come down and do that for me? Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I've heard that pies can be heavenly, and Miss Edith McCracken, she had to learn her lesson the hard way, didn't she? <laughs> About whose pie was the best, and I want you to remember that. <clears throat> as you test, test my pie. Now, now uh, you know, it's, you know, uh, my mama says that it's not bragging if it's a fact. So we're just gonna see. So I want you to, to, to test my pie. <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Gloria Duncans, I haven't seen her pickles in quite a while. So it's pretty safe, I think. <laughs> see, yes. <clears throat> Can you tell me about this pie? Have you had it before? Not yours. I Not my. This kind. Oh. Traverse Pie Company. Oh my! I have a lot to to keep up with now. I heard it's your favorite. It is. I. It is. Oh, we'll try it. It was. It was. <laughs> now look. I think there's some other favorites of yours in here. What did you? What would you say? <laughs> Have you lost your appetite now? Come on. <laughs> no, no, she can't yet. Gotta take a bite. Now remember, as my mama says, if you can't say anything nice, it's best not to say anything at all. Now, as you can see, we have something special for today. And um, in all seriousness, I have waited five years to say this, 
Miss Mary Sue, could you come to the platform? <laughs> she gets to say that to me all the time. <laughs> now, if you'll stay right here, Miss Carol is coming, and she has something to say about today. And we're just glad for all of your blessings that are here. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> I've got pie! <laughs> for keeping your kids in this area without you knowing about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't you step over here so I can see. This is something that should have been done a long time ago. And I, it would have done if I had not been a procrastinator. <laughs> but we have a Distinguished Service Award for Tom and Mary Sue. Um, something that's needed to be done for a long time, goes without saying. You both have blessed us with leadership on the church board, involvement in many areas of music, organizations in missions, teaching and mentoring in classes, hospitality in your homes, and encouragement. We are indebted to your faithful service. Now, I had a whole list of things under each of those areas that I was going to tell you. I, misplaced. <laughs> I have misplaced my um, little notes I had, but every, people know what you have done and over the years, and I really wanted to remind them, but they only allowed us 240 spaces on this, which Mary Sue knows, I'm sure, and it was hard to get it all in. But you have, how many people have ever been in Tom and Mary Sue's home? Show of hands, look at that. They, they, yes, you, we, um, we're so happy we was able to surprise you <laughs> because <laughs> we, <laughs> well, maybe you'll get to actually eat that. <laughs> but um, we are just so grateful for all you have done for this church for the many years. We know it's done to the Heavenly Father, and we know that it's gone out into the community as well. And the mentoring that you do, Tom, Sunday school classes that Tom has taught for years and years. There's just so many things that we can tell you about. Mary Sue has been our church board secretary, is right now, and she, um, that's a job. I don't know if you realize, but that, that has more than just what it says. It, it's involved, and uh, we so appreciate it. Mary Sue has stepped in when I couldn't be missionary president, when I've had sickness and so forth, and uh, she offers because she loves me and she loves the Lord and she loves missions. And that's another thing. They've been on mission trips. They've housed missionaries in their home time and again. And uh, I would just, we just can't thank you enough for what you've done. And I don't know if you got um, the order of service this morning, but you can do away with that now. <laughs> I think you were given fake ones. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we really wanted to surprise you, and I'm glad we did. So, um, thank you, and would, would you please give them a round of applause?
have something from the family. I've wanted, uh, every time some of these kids come, I say, when are you gonna give us a song? And so, since, since I was able to do a little planning, I, I invited them to do that today. So, come on up, guys. They say the microphones are here. <laughs> You guys don't care that we're totally winging this, right? Hey, that's, that's the way the Jacksons do it, at least dad, right? <laughs> I, I always say, I am my dad and I married my mom, so I tend, I tend to fly by the seat of my pants, too. Okay. All right. Um, well, we are truly winging it. Christy has something that she's going to read, but she's having a little trouble pulling it up. So, um, I don't know if, if very many of you know that our family used to sing together, and um, they called us the Jackson Five, uh, uh, which was very appropriate, right? And I think Rob hated every second of it. He says yes. Uh, uh, but we have some sweet memories of singing, uh, really kind of, uh, we sang at revivals at other churches quite a bit. Um, we'd have to practice at home, and mom and dad would only make us kids go on certain nights of the revival. We didn't have to go out at all of the nights. Um, but we have some sweet memories singing together as a family, and this is the first time that my family is singing all together. So your grand boys have prepared this for you. Uh, it's a song that we've heard on the radio, and maybe you've heard it on the radio, but we feel like it fits Grammy and Granddad really well. It's track number five. Did anybody tell yep. you that? <laughs> Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite, all that never get it right. But it turned out they're the ones you were looking for all this time. I'm just a nobody trying to tell you. And since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Moses has stayed fried, and David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outside us, nobody would have chosen if you changed. Yeah. 
to the Brazil Church of the Nazarene for honoring our parents today. We have watched them give, sorry I can't read this paper. <laughs> We've watched them give their lives to this church since we were very young children. Our mom and dad were here every time the doors were open and usually the last to leave. At least mom was, dad was probably in the car waiting for her. <laughs> And they weren't just participants um, in these mini services. They were usually planning, teaching, singing, leading, and playing piano or organ for whatever was going on. And their commitment to the church goes beyond the time spent in these four walls. They have also spent countless hours at home studying for Sunday school, missionary, and Bible study lessons, preparing special music numbers, hosting missionaries, and ministering to hurting people in ways that only those on the receiving end of their kindness and generosity would know about. We grew up under the teaching of, of godly pastors and Sunday school teachers who had great influence on us, but the example that we had at home was what would shape us in the greatest of ways. As mom and dad's service to God and to this church extended into our daily lives. Let me get glasses. <laughs> we saw our parents give of their time when they didn't have much of it, and their finances when money was tight, always giving God the first fruits of everything they had. We saw them love people that were difficult to love, forgive others who had hurt them, and always put God first at home in both their private and public lives. We think Colossians 3, 12 through 17 is a beautiful summary of how mom and dad have lived their lives. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other in forgiving one another. Forgiving as God has forgiven you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds us all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I'm sure that mom and dad will think they do not deserve to be recognized in this way. Mom will name a long list of other people who have sacrificed for the church, and she's right, as so many of you have served alongside our parents all of these years. You've been friends, partners in ministry, and family. And dad will say that they just did what they felt was right, never expecting to be acknowledged. And he's right, the only recognition they ever sought was to hear someday, well done, my good and faithful servant. But mom and dad, Today we want to publicly honor your service, sacrifice, and faithful ministry to the Brazil Church of the Nazarene. You've been a beautiful example to all who have attended here, including your own children and our families. We know that your example, like that of your own parents, and of so many of the saints who have walked these aisles, will continue to change the lives for generations to come. They left this up here, their Distinguished Service Award. <laughs> on behalf of the Brazil Church of the Nazarene, <laughs> come on, you guys. <laughs> uh, turn around. Where? We'll just make it official. <laughs> Photograph time. On behalf of the Brazil Church of the Nazarene, we are grateful to present Tom and Mary Sue Jackson, a Distinguished Service Award. Amen. 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 
I think it's cool, but I got to do it. Thanks, guys. There we go. They had a fake schedule and a real schedule, and I'm still confused. <laughs> so um, I was told this was my time. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, 7 through 11, if you want to stand as we read the word. But the end of all things is at hand, therefore, the end of all things is at hand, therefore, the end of all things is at hand. You getting that? Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, bless the truth today and help us as we draw closer to you and stay connected to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I wish I had the time to really unpack this message for you today, but I was told it had to be brief, so... Uh, this, this passage is full of great advice. The words that Peter used, just wow. You know, you can grab each one of those. Peter's challenging his readers to make sure their Christianity is current. Why? Because the end of all things is at hand. The end of everything that he knew here on the world was, was coming to an end. Whether through death or whether through rapture, the end is coming. For all of us, as what we know and what we've, we've recognized for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, almost 80 for the Jacksons, <laughs> all these years, the stuff that we have taken for granted that's been a part of our life and whatever, it's coming to an end, right? Right? Life as we know it is going to change, whether we die or whether we rapture. It doesn't matter. Christians at any moment reach the end of life here on planet Earth. It was true back then, Peter's time, still true today. The end will come, and it will change everything. But be ready be faithful to the end of your life. These are constant themes found in God's word. Be ready. The end is near. The end of all things is at hand. So how do we keep our Christianity current? Peter gives us the answer, therefore. The first thing is love God. Love God. Peter wrote, the end is coming, therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. Prayer is our personal connection with God. It's how we show love to God. That in worship services and praise, there's a lot of things, but prayer is one of those. The way we keep a current connection with God is the action of conversation with God. God speaks to us through his word and through our conscience but we speak to God through our prayer and through our praise and through our worship. We need to take this seriously because lack of communication is the biggest barrier to love. We think all the time about husbands and wives and, and specifically, and we say, well, when did things start? Well, when we stopped communicating is where it always comes back to. They may not use those words, but he forgot to tell her he loved her for the 15th time that day. And she forgot to show it. And the communication did not get there. She needs to be told. He needs to feel it or see it. 
And so we, we got to get that communication going. But lack of communication with God is the same thing. If you're not talking to God and he's not talking to you, guess what happens to the relationship? If God is speaking and you and I are not listening, if God is speaking, if God is speaking and we're not listening, there's a breakdown in the love relationship. God wants to hear about your day's issues. But if we don't pray, and if we skip out on worship, then there's a breakdown in expressing our love toward God. It'd be good every day just to have a little time when you can say, hey God, I love you. My father waits every Saturday for my oldest brother to call him at 10 a.m., and I'm supposed to call him by one, or he starts calling me, because it's our way of communicating our love, because dad lives alone now since mom died two years ago, and it's just something we do. Every week, my brother and I call him, because we need the communication of our love. Jesus said the first commandment is to love God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. You will be ready for the end by keeping a current connection with God. And I tell you how important this is. It's like daily exercise. As you're going through it, you say, well, I don't know that today did any difference. Maybe not. But over the long haul, the connection is there. Same way with Jesus Christ. Well, today's prayer time may not be all that exciting, or maybe the Bible reading wasn't all that exciting to you, but you're keeping the connection going, and then when you need it, it's there. You exercise, and when you need it, it's there. It's good for you. We do it every day. You don't have to worry about your food, do you? We eat it on a regular basis. I never think about, how is this pancake going to help me today? And so in our relationship with God, we've got to keep that connection. Love God. Do it every day. And God will come through. The second thing, of course, he said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind. He said, love your neighbors yourself. So the second one is love neighbor. Uh, love your neighbor. Um, Peter wrote in verse 8 that the greatest thing we can do for others is to have fervent love for one another. Why? For love will cover a multitude of sins. And he's quoting from Proverbs. Um, only through love, he's saying, can we forgive others for the wrongs they have afflicted upon us. That's what it means. Love covers a multitude of wrongs that have been done to us. We just love them in spite of, and we forgive, and we move on. We love others through our words, through our actions, through our attitudes. Hospitality, verse 9 We've already mentioned that about Mary Sue, was essential to the early church Peter was addressing. Hospitality was, was, what was where it was at because the new Christians met at each other's homes for worship, for encouragement, and for fellowship. And as they met together and they invite their friends, they used this love to attract non-Christians into the relationship. They didn't have a church to go to. They had church in their houses. They worshiped and fellowshiped. And shared, and they were to share this love without grumbling, verse 9. So an attitude had a part of it. Nothing worse than to have a hospitality situation where you're together and somebody's in the corner grumbling all the time, right? And so attitude has a lot to do with our love. Some people will be different than you, yet we have to find a way to love them in Jesus. So we stay ready for the end by keeping a current connection with God and a connection current with other people. And we show love to both. Show your love to God, show love to your neighbor. And then number three, love both God and your neighbor through ministry. Because he keeps going, verses 10 and 11. Uh, as each one has received a gift, minister it as to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 
If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory, the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So there's ministry involved. God has gifted every Christian with love and grace, and it needs to be shared. We minister through what we say. He says, if anybody speaks. Now, Paul would give a list here of, of jobs of, of ministry, and he does that two or three times. And Okay, if you're going to be a pastor, you be a teacher, you be an evangelist. You do. No, Paul said, or Peter is saying, if you're going to speak, any Christian, is any Christian here not speak? So it's not just the pastors, evangelists, or teachers, or or those that are necessarily leading. It's everyone. If you're going to speak, speak in love. Speak in grace. Speak to others. Tell them. We minister in words to others and to God. We've already talked about prayer. This is ministry. Every Christian uses his or her words to communicate love. We also minister through actions. He says if anyone ministers, do it with the ability God supplies. Just like words, we all use actions in ministry. Shaking hands is an action of love. Giving a smile, a hug is an action of love. Faithfully living out your relationship with God is love in action. The things that we do and the things that we say are how we communicate God's love. It's ministry. We don't have to sit back and, and, and say, okay, I have this particular gift, although we do need to use those gifts. But we just all need to, as we're going through life, minister and act like we love Jesus. It's not hard. There's nothing here that I'm telling you that's new. What I'm telling you is we want to keep our connection current. And we show our love to God and our show our love to others by Actions and words that minister. We try to make ministry so complicated. Peter reminds us that every Christian shares love through words and actions. But attitude is also important because he wrote that in all things, God may be glorified. We're not speaking and acting and ministering just so that we get the attention. We're doing it so God gets the attention. So he's the one that gets lifted up. Amen? Whether it's playing the piano or teaching a class, it doesn't matter. How are you doing it? We do it for God. He gets the glory. He deserves it. Our words and actions and ministry are given with the attitude of God deserves the praise. The end of life here on earth is coming soon to each of us. Soon is relative, I know. Some it may be five years, some it may be 25. We just have no idea when it will be or how long it will be. So we must keep our Christianity current. Current. We must be ready at any time. And we stay ready by loving God, loving others. Active ministry is how we love God and love others. The best violins made. Anybody know what they're called? Stradivarius. When I grew up, we had 33 RPMs. Remember those things? And Dad got this long play, 33 RPM, and you could flip it over and play on the other side. They're really, really cool. Those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about. And they have like six songs on a side or whatever. And he got this 33 RPM record, phonograph, they called them. And it was of Stradivarius violin with, of course, an orchestra behind it. And we would listen to that and be mesmerized because this was a Stradivarius. A guy by the name of Antonio Stradivari. 400 years ago, created violins, cellos, and so on, and there was a group along with him, but he was the name that went to the Stradivarius violins. 
Today, you can sell one for millions of dollars if you had one. The problem with a Stradivarius violin is that if you bought one, it would do you no good to lock it up in a case for people to come by to view. Why? Because then it would lose its value. Because a Stradivarius violin needs to be played in order to keep it in tune, in order to keep it functioning properly, in order for it to have worth. Because it is an instrument. And so these million dollar violins are bought by millionaires. <laughs> and then they contract with top violin players around the nation. And there's an institute in Chicago that helps that contract. And they will give them their million dollars violin, Stradivarius, to a top player in some symphony orchestra or a person who goes, and they will get the privilege of playing that instrument. The owner just requires that twice a year they come and give them a personal concert, which is cool. Because the value of the violin is that it is being played. There is no value in a violin sitting in a museum case. And as the more it is played, the more it increases in value. And I think about that in our current relationship with Jesus. The value of your relationship is not that I used to be a Christian and I'm sitting in a case somewhere and everybody looks, comes by and looks at you. The value is not going to be what they say so much at your funeral. The value is what are you doing today in playing for Jesus? The value is, is other people hearing your song about God. The importance of us today is ministry. That's our connection. And that's how we keep our relationship with God current. It's staying active for the kingdom of God. And God has given each of us the most valuable gift of his love. We must share that love or it loses its value. Ministry through words and actions with a proper attitude will keep the love flowing. And that is how you keep your Christianity current. In our family altar time this morning, let's just talk to God about whatever it is that's on your heart. But in the middle of talking to God, somewhere in there, just say, Lord, I just want my praise to you to grow. I just want my ministry to you to continue to flow. I just want to keep my current relationship with God. Amen. And make it stronger. And use it for the honor and glory of God. Because we all know those who are influencing our lives because of their ministries. Jacksons are one of those families that do that. There are many, many others. And we want to continue to do that for God. Because the end is coming. Amen. Let's stand together. I think praise team's coming. And uh, let's just open the family altar time. Come and talk to the Lord about anything this morning. But talk to him about keeping that relationship current and vital and going strong. Amen. Yes, you do have to play.
to God right now. When you can look at our lives and our ministries, our passions, and we can surrender them all to you and say, Lord, the words that I say, the actions that I do, the attitude that I carry, may it be, Lord, something that will bring honor and glory to God, that my relationship with you will just be current. That I won't get bound up in the things of this world that would detract me from a relationship with God. That I need to communicate with you every day. And that, Lord, I need to share your love every day. Lord, help us to realize that in our homes. Help us to not take each other for granted. Help us to realize that in our church. Help us, Lord, to encourage and love and help each other. But help us do that, Lord, to the non-Christians that we're associated with, that somehow they can see a difference in us because everybody else is all about themselves, but we are all about trying to reach others as well with the love of Jesus. May the words that we speak, the thoughts of our mind, the attitudes in which we exhibit them, and then the actions of, of actually doing ministry, Lord, may it all be, may it all be, through the love of Jesus because the world needs to know. We pray right now today for those that are struggling with physical needs. We pray for those today that are struggling with emotional issues, relationships, finances, the basics of life. We pray for those today, Lord, that are struggling with spiritually giving themselves to you. I pray that they will just say yes. Just say yes to the lordship and leadership that you provide. We have a plan and a purpose to follow, and that plan and purpose is given to us by Jesus Christ. Every person in this room, you, Lord, desire something special for them. For those that are praying here at this altar, I pray that you'll specifically show them, Lord, guide them, lead them every day so they can more perfectly exhibit the love of Jesus Christ and know your love themselves personally. Make it real, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, for this time of sharing together. And now for our worship, we just thank you. It is beautiful to worship you. <laughs> so we're going to worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. I'm over here. <laughs> um, I just really wanted to quickly say that uh, growing up in this church and having, you know, my best friend here and my my church family, um, it really is a blessing. And I 
I just had such a great, uh, so many great memories at your house. <laughs> Um, and just wanted to say that I appreciate your family and that I love you guys and I think I'm thankful for you too. The atmosphere is changing. Nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting for the mention of your name. The Spirit is moving, burning like a flame. And healing the broken by the one we proclaim. Raise it up, fill the sky. Chains will fall. Mountains move, we lift you high. To speak the name, the name above all other names. To speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down, fill the earth with the sound of the name.
That's what you're here for. Lift up Jesus. Thank you so much, Julie. All right, our ushers are coming as we continue our worship. And uh, let's give to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be blessed by your presence in this worship service and, Lord, to be a blessing to others through our ministries of this church. And we pray that you bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to be able to make it through this. <laughs> Discouraged. Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus
love to tell just one more story before we wrap up. Um, well, Dad's birthday is on Tuesday, so happy birthday, Dad. That's all you're getting. <laughs> um, he's, he has requested that song a few times, and we just haven't been able to work it out um, to have it sung. Candace was supposed to be here today, and she's sick. So, Julie, uh, we kind of practiced that a little bit. Um, before the service, but uh, maybe five years ago, four or five years ago on, on an Easter weekend, our family came and um, Pastor Betts preached a, a sermon. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember a whole lot about the sermon, but I know that it was on surrender. And I have a very um, formational moment that happened for me that night because at the end of the service, he opened the altar and two of the first people to be at the altar were Jay Pitts and my dad. Um, and I think about those two men and the absolute spiritual giants they are in, in my life and I know in many of your lives. And yet, here they were in the twilight of their, their years. I don't remember how old Jay was when he went to heaven, but they were the first <laughs> to come and surrender that night. They are on a journey. We're all on a journey. We have not arrived. We have not arrived. We love God, and we love others, and we will be in glory. We will have arrived when we make it to heaven, but I'm grateful that I have a daddy and a mama who know they haven't arrived, and they continue to surrender and serve with humility. Thanks for letting us be a part of your service today. I think Tom's been checking how many credit cards he has because he knows that this whole crew is here. But I want to let him know that uh, Mary Sue uh, doesn't have to cook today, that uh, there is a meal prepared for the family uh, next door. So you don't have to worry about that and all this, all this crew. So the family has a, has a meal prepared. Uh, sorry it wasn't open to the whole entire church. It uh, was just this, a group preparing in secret. <laughs> Well, the value you have to talk to that red hat lady about, and uh, I think she may have an answer to that anyway. So, uh, praise team is coming, and they're going to close up our service with a song at this time, and uh, we're going to go out worshiping. Amen? Amen. Amen. Worship the Lord. Yeah, let's stand.